Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, okay. Um, what I'm going to share with you is uh, the answer to this simple question. Why Bitcoin Cash adoption is a must? When I say a must, I mean uh, a commitment uh, or historical and social responsibility. So uh, I'm going to approach to the answer to that question from two points of view. First of all, macroeconomics, and I'm going to take a case study in Colombia. Colombia is a very particular country, as we will see later. Uh, but it not only applies to Colombia, but uh, for every country in the world, and mostly developing countries. And secondly, from a historical, philosophical point of view, and in this particular topic, I want to warn you that I have a Christian background, so um, I don't believe in historical materialism. I believe that everything in history works uh, from, with a divine purpose. Um, uh, so let's begin. Uh, Colombia is a 49 million uh, inhabitants country with 68% of the population economical, economically able. 72% uh, of the population under 45 years, so it's a very young country. And uh, we have a literacy index above 94.2% which is uh, not the ideal 100%, but uh, uh, it is uh, uh, acceptable. However, uh, although we have uh, all the ingredients to be a strong and healthy economically developing country, our performance has been bad. GDP growth rate in the last 10 years under 4%, which is bad. And in the last two years, under 2%, which is a disaster. Because it means, in a, in a country with this population, it means more unemployment, more uh, insecurity, increased in criminality, and uh, social decomposition. This is not, these are not good news. Uh, a study of the World Economic Forum says that if a developing country wants to become developed, it must grow at a consistent rate of 7% uh, year over year for 20 years. So our numbers are not helping us. But, uh, okay, I didn't come here to tell you the bad news. I came here to tell you what the solutions are. And besides, more than 60% of the countries of the world are in similar or worse situation. So uh, I'm not going to stay in this very much. This is a comparison become, be, between income and, and expense uh, on the average Colombian citizen and U.S. citizen. As you may see there, one thing to notice is that our average monthly net salary is roughly 12% of that of a person in the United States, which means uh, too low. Um, life is cheaper, it's true, by 50%. So if we make some calculations, we can see that uh, the average Colombian citizen is losing 38% uh, purchasing and savings power compared to uh, U.S. citizens. Uh, okay. But as I said before, I didn't come here to tell you bad news. I want to tell you what can we do for our country as, uh, to answer the question of JFK. Uh, Bitcoin Cash is a tool that we must use. Uh, Bitcoin Cash price has increased its value month over month in a rate 29.55% uh, on in average since August last year. It means that Bitcoin Cash owners have 29.55% uh, on average, on average, uh, month over month, 
more purchasing power. If we were able to transfer this purchasing power to the retail market, we could make an impact, a positive impact in economy. It depends on what's the volume of Bitcoin Cash owners in, in Colombia. Now let's see the potential. Colombia is the third country in the world in growth uh, Bitcoin transactions after China and Nigeria. And the uh, Bitcoin uh, transactions are uh, almost near 2% of GDP, which is a huge amount of money. Uh, too much people using Bitcoin in Colombia. Uh, however, people is not using Bitcoin in the retail market. People is using Bitcoin for other, or other different uh, uh, things. But talking about the potential, we see that we, have, uh, we already have the potential to impact the economy uh, positively in an acceptable percentage. We have, if we have 2% of the GDP represented in Bitcoin transactions, then we, ha we have, if we take into account that uh, retail sector is 12.5% of GDP, then we have 16% uh, of the whole retail sector represented in Bitcoin transactions. So we have the potential to impact the retail sector. We already have it. Uh, and I don't know if I mentioned before, but our goal as company, um, I forgot to introduce myself. Uh, <laughs> Uh, my company is called BTEC. Our only purpose is to bring Bitcoin Cash to day-to-day -to -day life of every single person on planet Earth, beginning in Colombia. We want to uh, bring Bitcoin Cash as a payment method in every, every shop or store or whatever else around the world. So uh, we are able to reach uh, this 10% which is the critical mass in Colombia right now. However, we have a problem. Uh, people is using Bitcoin mainly for holding, saving. In Ponzi schemes, in Colombia very common, and in trading. Uh, what people don't realize sometimes is that, uh, well, uh, Ponzi schemes are bad. Ponzi schemes are always a losing game. Uh, holding is okay because it is to save, savings. But uh, trading, as uh, she said before, well, uh, if, if the people is not very experienced and know what they're doing, it's a risky activity. So, and, and trading is a zero-sum game. Money, some people win, some people lose. And the balance is always zero. So, don't tell me that every person in Colombia, which is thousands of people, doing trading is earning money. I, I don't think so. Uh, people don't have the mindset that uh, Bitcoin is money. Bitcoin and money is used to purchase goods and services. That's the purpose of money. Now, what, what, what do we want to do to convert to... Uh, uh, to reach our goal, which is to bring this 10% uh, of the critical mass to Bitcoin Cash in the retail sector. We want to, first, we want to convert Bitcoin users into Bitcoin Cash users. That's easy to do. We can do it with a shape shift uh, like button in our platform, and it's, it's, uh, it's not uh, hard to do, really. And we want to provide every merchant with our payment gateway uh, to bring them uh, customers. We're offering them a new niche of people wanting to buy products and services with using Bitcoin Cash. So if a merchant is uh, uh, said that he's going to receive uh, more customers, well, he's going to be pretty happy to to accept a new payment method. Uh, so what, what we want to 
uh, do or means to uh, uh, to reach this uh, uh, purpose are to give massive educational and promotion campaigns via social media, web conferences, and uh, also many, many, uh, uh, you know, call centers and everything we can use to reach people and tell them, you can use Bitcoin Cash to make the economy of the country better. So the, the short question to, to the first answer, which was uh, why Bit, uh, is Bitcoin Cash adoption a must, is uh, not because it's our or, or, or business model, but because we have a social responsibility to bring Bitcoin Cash to help uh, improve the economy of our country and many other countries in the world who are suffering, uh, where people is suffering the consequences of an oppressive uh, financial and uh, government systems. Now, I want to approach the second part. Some people, some people despise Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, in our case, uh, saying, why, why, why is a virtual token called, why, why do you call a virtual token the economic revolution? And the short answer is uh, because Bitcoin is the, the, uh, the first software that successfully uh, solved the problem of double spend and uh, cast away uh, the need to trust in third parties. And that's the short answer. Bitcoin does it. Easy. Now, but uh, there are people more skeptical uh, about uh, technical advance causing a revolution, but I must remember then that every single revolution in the history of humankind has been, two, has, had, uh, has, had, has had two characteristics, two main characteristics visionary people behind them, and a technical or scientific advance. For instance, I'm going to name you some of them, a brief summary of them. In the fourth century, uh, the stirrup, the thing used to ride horses firmly, were used by the German barbarians to uh, conquer, to, to defeat the Roman legions, and years later, created a new society, the feudalism and the Middle Ages, all by one small device called the stirrup. In the 13th century, a monk called Roger Bacon uh, uh, made experimental uh, experimented in optics, but in the way he invented the experimental method, who, which is the precursor of the scientific method. Uh, he is, in fact, the, the, called the father of the modern science. And uh, also, he uh, justified the technology. And in, in, in the times of Roger Bacon, the term technology didn't even exist. But uh, he uh, justified the transformation of nature to improve uh, human living. So uh, 150 to 200 years later, because of the influence of this uh, visionary man, uh, we, the, the Europe met the Renaissance. In the 16th century, for instance, Another monk, uh, Martin Luther, used a technical advance, the movable type printing press, to spread the word of the gospel in its purest form throughout the north of Europe, and the world met the Reformation. It made a huge change in the mindset of the people in the north of Europe. The south of Europe, mainly Spain, Portugal, they embraced religion 
And when they came to the Americas, uh, conquer from Mexico to Arger Argentina, and 500 years later, in our days, we can see underdevelopment in these countries. However, uh, the Puritan and uh, Calvinist and Protestant colonizers who arrived to, to, to the north uh, part of America, uh, years later, or centuries later, founded the, uh, the United States, which is today the most powerful country in the world. It can be a coincidence, but I don't think so. I, I, think, I think this is a matter of mindset. I think this uh, revolution of Martin Luther caused all of this in our days, and we're still living it. Now, in the 20th century, uh, OK, uh, in the 18th century, James Watt produced the first uh, steam engine, which rapidly spread around the world globally to uh, do every task from transportation to manufacturing to whatever. And uh, the, the, the world made the industrial revolution. We are, until now, dealing with the consequences of the industrial revolution now. Uh, new classes, new social classes, the, the owners of the means of production, according to Marx's terms, and the the pauper, the proletarians, and all of this conflict, uh, and uh, new ideolo ideology, the uh, socialism, and all of that. And we're still uh, dealing with the consequences of that. Now, uh, in the 20th century, uh, the socialism saw an end. But what defeated socialism? Not the Pope, not Ronald Reagan, but another scientific advance. The revolution of productivity by Frederick Taylor and the scientific administration. It made possible for, for uh, the pauper uh, proletarian to become a middle high class income worker in the first world. So socialism fell not because of the Pope, not because of Ronald Reagan, but because subtraction of matter. No more proletarians in the first world. In the third world, we still have the uh, breeding ground for, for this uh, narrative that uh, uh, it can change, and we must change that. Now, in the, in the, 20, in the, 21st, in the 20th century, we saw the revolution of information another technical advance, the computer, telematics, and the automations uh, made the, the, the population of the first world migrate from doing and moving things to administrative uh, tasks, uh, information tasks. Another revolution caused by uh, a, a scientific or technical advance. Now, in the 21st century, now, in our days, we're seeing the economic revolution. We're in the early stages, very early, I guess. But it has a little difference with it, its predecessors. Uh, none of the above revolutions touched the nature of money, changed, changed the nature of society, changed, uh, you know, creating new classes and new forms of relationship between uh, balance of power, but none of them touched the very nature of money. The money has always been something uh, untouch untouchable. Uh, but Bitcoin is a new, free, trustless, uh, a bold form of money. Excuse me. Five minutes. Okay. Uh, so, uh, well, I, I'm, I'm gonna to to, to see the uh, the picture, the complete picture. I, I'm gonna 
say something. When Jesus asked the Pharisees, show me the image and superscription in the coin, do you remember what they said? What they answered? Somebody, anyone remember? Caesar's. Caesar's. He said, render therefore to Caesar what is Caesar's. What he wanted to say is money belongs to Caesar. You don't own the money. The money belongs to Caesar. Now, for the first time in history of humankind, we, the people, are able to kick Caesar's ass out of our <laughs> property. And that's what Bitcoin is. And that's why it is the economic revolution. Now, the revolution is not the blockchain. The revolution is Bitcoin. The reason of the blockchain is to cast away a third party, the need of a third party to, to, make, to make a transaction between two parties. But uh, the blockchain allows Bitcoin to be trustless. Now, the ironic part of this is that the third parties are claiming now that blockchain is the revolution. The revolution is not blockchain, it's Bitcoin. And in our case, Bitcoin Cash. <laughs> now, Bitcoin Cash will produce a new balance of power between governments, the financial system, and the society. And that will be, uh, we're going to see in the coming years what's going to happen with this. But we now count on a new freedom of money that never in history of humankind had before. Now, this generation, you sitting there, sitting here, have the post. We have the post. What are we going to do with it? So here we are. Uh, here we are. I represent this company called btech.co. Uh, these are our contact details, contact information. So we are here to cooperate with the whole community to make Bitcoin Cash the money of the future, of the present. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Boris. Okay. We got some scripture this morning. <laughs> Sunday morning. Do we have any questions? <laughs> Woo! I have a question, Boris. Yeah. What? Uh, for, excuse me. For the questions, I beg you please to speak uh, a little bit loud and slow because um, I'm not a native speaker, so uh, sometimes. Okay, no pasa nada. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Boris, question. What has been the penetration of Bitcoin Cash in Colombia, and what are the driving factors for Bitcoin Cash adoption? in your country? OK, as I said before, Bitcoin has, Bitcoin transactions are more, almost 2% of the of, uh, gross uh, domestic product, GDP. So Bitcoin Cash is not well known because people uh, has a lot of misinformation. And many Bitcoin people in Colombia is by the side of the Bitcoin core attitude of, you know, Bitcoin Cash is the Chinese Bitcoin, and Bitcoin Cash is the Bitcoin of Roger Ver and all of these sort of uh, illusions. But uh, what we want to do, what we would need to do, is to uh, make massive campaigns of ed re education of Bitcoiners in Colombia. And uh, we're pretty doing it uh, with a with a whole team we have and uh, working in cooperation with, with the Bitcoin Cash Fund, which has helped helps us a lot in this. Thank you. That was awesome. Any other questions? All right, hold on. Hi. Um, so, what do you think is the biggest difference in adoption uh, in Bitcoin Cash? in Colombia versus, say, the Americas? Well, I, I don't really know what's the level of adoption in the rest of the countries of America, but uh, uh, microphone? But uh, is that your question? 
Uh, so I'm not I'm, I'm not talking about the level of adop adoption, but rather the the mode or method, like okay. the the like the method of adoption. Like, do you you see it as being different? Like, do people view it in a different way? How like how would you compare and contrast? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, I I think you answered that a little bit when you said you know people view Bitcoin Core versus Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Core versus Roger Ver's Bitcoin and Bitcoin versus the Chinese Bitcoin. I, is, I think yeah. you mentioned that, yeah? Yeah, but something else is that uh, in Colombia and most of the countries of Latin America, 75% of, uh, of the retail market is offline. So, so point of sale uh, developments are very important there. Hmm? All right, I, I promise, Ken. Hi. Um, Hi. Revelation 3.12 says Jesus will return uh, with his new name. Um, maybe I read a little bit. Um, I will write upon him the name of my, my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. So what do you think of his new name? <laughs> well, this question do doesn't belong to this forum. <laughs> but, 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 but sure, Jesus is going to come back. And when he comes back, I guess Revelation 13 says that uh, something uh, that... Uh, we don't realize sometimes because uh, many people don't believe in these things, but uh, the Antichrist, the figure of the Antichrist is going to dominate the economy of the world with a one world currency. Now the question is, is this currency Bitcoin? And the answer is no, because it must be a controlled currency. And Bitcoin is not controlled and cannot be controlled. I mean, Bitcoin Cash. Bitcoin, Bitcoin can be controlled, but Bitcoin Cash cannot be controlled. Amen. So, I'm going to wrap up with that yeah. one. Woo! All right. Let's give a round of applause for Boris.